Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast. Got Coach PJ Gibbs on. So blessed, man. I mean, to be able to meet Jim McNally and then, you know, get Norm Chow. And I got Coach McNally texting me six times before 8 a.m. I mean, it's 8.10 now. But to have Coach PJ Gibbs. And, man, Coach, before you get going, would you like to tell the clinic and all the people who are watching or will watch about what we just talked about and what we got planned to do? Yeah, so um, we're going to do a fundraiser um, in April for uh, uh, an institution down here called Family Initiative, and they strictly work with um, uh, all ages with autism. Um, And uh, uh, my my daughter is on the autism spectrum, and we did a fundraiser last year and uh, raised over $6,000 for the the facility. Um, So obviously, you know, we want to do more and um, they, they are such a great group of people. Um, they came to uh, two of our football games last year and sit on the sideline and, um, and just want, just looking to give back, you know, just kind of the things we teach our kids about servant leadership and, you know, things like that. So um, we're going to be putting on a, putting on a nice clinic in April with, um, with championship football coaches and with coach Taylor. And um, we got to lock down some, some, some guys to do it, but, you know, preliminary wise, we got a pretty, pretty good list of guys, offensive and defensive guys, that will um, that will help us raise some really good money. So I'm excited. T- tell us a little bit about yourself, Coach. Your journey before you get going. Yeah. So um, I, I started coaching in 2001 uh, at my, my alma mater, Manusquan High, Manusquan High School in New Jersey, and uh, was a young linebacker coach and uh, had some really good teachers. Uh, coach Vic Cabu, who, who was my high school coach, and guys like Pete Cahill, Jay Price, Rich Reed, that helped bring me up. And I was blessed to coach under two Hall of Fame head coaches in New Jersey, Coach Cabo, and then my first defensive coordinator job, I was 26 uh, for Joe Martucci at Matawan High School. Um, and then I went back home after three years there and went back to Manasquan and got to coach uh, under Pete Cahill, who was my defensive coordinator, and then Jay Price, who was my linebacker coach um, when Pete made the transition to the AD spot. And um, my brother-in-law, who actually now is the assistant line coach at Washington State? He uh, was at University of Missouri at the time, and he was recruiting in Southwest Florida. And he said, "Hey, I don't know if you guys are thinking about leaving, but there's a bunch of schools that are looking for for coaches, and your t- your certificate transfers down there, and the whole whole deal." So um, we just had my daughter, and then my son was shortly thereafter, and um, we came down. My in laws had moved down in 2013, so it came down. Uh, a year later, I put my resume out and uh, had three interviews and got offered two jobs and went back to my in-laws house and told my wife, like, are you ready to do this? Cause this is going to happen pretty quick. And came back to New Jersey, uh, sold our house in 10 days. And July 2nd of 2015, we packed the car up and with the kids in it and moved down to Florida and was at Gulf coast for three years, won a district title, Palmetto Ridge for three. We, uh, first, uh, CCAC championship in the history of that school. Then I I was fortunate enough to go to East Lee County high school for a year as a head coach. And, Took over a program that was 0-27 in three years. We won four games in one year, and um, we moved uh, moved our kids' schools. So uh, my wife, I was commuting over an hour and 10 minutes to, to go to East from where I live. So my wife, we, we kind of had a meeting and said, you know, I got to get closer to home. So fortunate enough for me, my principal that originally hired me when we moved down here is down at Golden Gate High School. So uh, I moved back there as the D.C. and recruiting coordinator and um you know, got some great, great kids there. So it's been, it's been a wild ride, but uh, developed this three high safety system uh, over the last year. And that's out and doing really well with that and doing installs. I did an install this Sunday up at Eagle View Academy in Jacksonville. So it's been, it's been good, good, busy coach. It's been a good busy, uh, <laughs> you know, all these years. I just, I just muted my mic because I don't want any announcements to come on or anything, Coach, while you're talking. But we're just so blessed and so excited to have you, Coach. You know, like I, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm the low man on the totem pole. That's why we're on Totem Pole Nation, Totem Pole Sports. But, man, I just – sometimes you don't have to be smart. You just – sometimes you get blessed. And I've been so blessed, and I'm so excited about doing this clinic, man. So – let's have a good time today, brother. Thank you for coming on, man. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Like I said, I'll, um, I haven't used this stream yard stuff yet. So, I mean, other than last night, um, so I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and, and look at this, try to share the screen here. Yeah. And then uh, all I do is just add it in there. It looks like I'm adding a person when you present your screen or whatever you want to present. Yep. So, and this, this guy here, Jim, Tim coach, he's, 
Uh, he's tuning in. He's in Rochester, New York. He's our biggest fan on LinkedIn. Good morning. Hope all is well. What are your thoughts of recruitment versus NIL versus all of the distractions? Jim, we're gonna he, he can answer this, but uh, he's here to talk X's and O's. And I didn't ask Coach Brent Pry about this because I don't think he wants to talk much about this yesterday, James, Jim, when you answered it. So, Coach, can, can you give Jim a little bit on that, your thoughts of recruitment versus NIL and all of the distractions? Um, I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, um, what, one of the positive things I think about the NIL stuff is that it's keeping kids in college. Um, I, I think you, you, you don't see kids leaving, leave, leaving college um, early to go. You know, and again, it, it's, it's, it's their choice that, that, you know, everybody comes from a different journey, right? So if they want to take care of their mom, their grandma, you know, whatever they want to do, give back. I mean, uh, I thought one of the, you know, I'm, I'm a Michigan fan, so I, I thought one of the things that was great this past year was watching Blake Corum you know, on, on a torn meniscus out giving out turkeys to, to people and J.J. McCarthy donating money to children's hospitals. Um, you know, so from a positive, I, I think there's a, a the, the positive doesn't get as highlighted as much as the negative, um, you know. Uh, but as far as, you know, recruitment from the high school level, um, you know, obviously Florida high school, the NIL stuff isn't legal for high school athletes in the state of Florida. So we don't have to deal with that um, from a high school perspective. Now, when kids are getting recruited, I mean, that's their own deal, um, you know, but I think there has to be some regulation to it um, that the NC2A has to kind of step up. But um, I think we could do a whole podcast on on how they need to hold people accountable and um, do their job a little bit better, um, you know, as far as, you know, what they monitor and how they monitor it and just don't pick out schools because you hear things like have concrete definitive data before you go ahead and publicize an investigation. Um, I guess I hope that answered the question there, coach. Yeah, you're good, PJ. Yeah, Jim, uh, we're just going to let coach go because, man, I, I did not know. I mean, I, I did not know how legit coach is. All right. But he is legit. And I just want him to talk because people don't need to listen to me. All right, thank you, PJ. <laughs> Yes, sir. So, Coach, what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to go over uh, an overview of, of, of the system and kind of how we align to things. Um, so uh, when, when we talk about the, the three safety system, it's it's not I, I, I preface this with a lot of the, the, the talks that I've given about it is um, it's not we're not truly always in a three high. When I say three safety, I want to get as many athletes on the field. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of walk through how we line up to things. And then I'll show some video clips and, and, and talk about our pressures and what we do and um, kind of how I'm a big habit rate, havoc rate guy. Don Brown is, is my mentor. And um, a lot of the stuff that I do is because of coach and what he does and how I can take the stuff that he uses and implement it to make our kids successful. So um, how we align and how, how we're going to install like 10 personnel when we start spring football is uh, this is how we're going to line up. Um, we're going to have a three down. Um, we're going to be in. A tight front, so we'll be uh, two four eyes. The nose, um, we really don't have really big linemen on the west coast of Florida, um, so we, we use our, our speed and quickness. So our nose guard, the rule is always going to be to slant away from the back, so we give a definitive gap to the jack, who's our well linebacker. Uh, the mic here is going to be gapped up. He, both these guys will be in 30s, um, so he'll be gapped up because the nose is slant and lucky. We have a B gap defender, and we have the viper uh, as an apex minus defender. What that means is that um, he's going to be in the run fit. Um, it, it, we're not worried about the RPO to the Viper side because the back's away. Um, so we're going to play our Tampa two coverage. We start everything out and press too high. So the corner uh, to the defensive left um, is going to be pressed. He's going to be outside leverage press. The field safety, obviously, he's aligned um, inside of number two. He's going to he's going to bail in the half. We'll play um, palms to this side. So there'll be a mod technique. Uh, man outside deep for this corner. Uh, the safety is going to pat his feet and read number two. Uh, now the rover, who is our middle safety, his rule is to find number three right now and line up over number three. So the back is number three. So he's going to uh, be at about, uh, you know, around eight yards. Um, he's going to look to fit inside zone to banana for the quarterback on zone read. And if he reads pass, he's going to be the little hole player. So that's kind of how we, we we talk about how we're going to line up the 10 personnel. Now, when you watch Iowa State do it, obviously they 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 inspired me uh, when I was head coach for the Japanese national team. We installed this in 2020 
in the International Bowl. Coach, you could find that game on YouTube. Um, and we did, we beat the U17 US team uh, 28 to 20. And it was very, um, very simplistic in how we did things because we only had five days to get ready uh, for that game. Obviously, you know, when you're at your high school and you're around your kids, you have you have more um, more time to, to do this. But that's how that's how we're going to uh, go ahead and install it to 10 personnel. Um, and then, coach, obviously, if you want this, uh, I can email this to you um, as, as well. Uh, numbers for us are the key. Right. So I talked about, you know, the rover always finding number three. So 10 personnel back away. We're not four strong here. Um, so. We'll be in our, our tight front, our Mike and our Jack are in 30s. Now, again, we're still slanting lucky. All right, now we're four over three to the trips. So we're Tampa coverage here. The rover is all three vertical. I consider a hitch vertical because what a lot of things we'll see is we'll see four strong with an inside zone fake and then wanting to throw hitch here to number three. All right, we want these guys to play the run. We want them being downhill defenders. Uh, now, our single receiver rules, um, we have uh, based on the width of the X, so we either get a blue call or Indiana. So if it's a blue call, we're going to trap it. So the corner is going to undercut one. He'll undercut one and shuffle. The safety will get over top of number one. Eyes to one. That's the key is the eyes to one. And then what we'll do is he has to know he has to add to the box late and be cloud support. Okay. Um, now, if we get a – let me erase this real quick. If we get a wide split, we'll make an Indiana call. So it's invert. So now he is going to take away the slant curl and add to the box on run. We're going to align him inside and teach him deep half technique, forcing the fade. Okay. Now, you know, I always get a question with well, coach, what if we get a really tight split? So this, this guy is here. All right. So we just make a cone call. So that means if we get the wheel and this, he'll take the slant, the corner will take the wheel route. So that's kind of our adjustment to that, but we have numbers everywhere. So to, for the RPO stuff, you're four over three and you're two on one. Okay. So that, that's kind of how we go, go about, this is our Apache check out of our Baylor front. So Baylor's are three down, Georgia's are four down. And then we have a bear front with the same personnel um, on the field. All right. Um, here's 11 personnel. All right. So uh, what, what we'll do, we'll, we'll do this a couple different ways, but how we'll start off is, um, we'll move that the D end uh, into a five technique uh, or a four eye, just depending on how we're aligning. Okay. Um, the nose. So this is our Georgia concept. All right. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have the nose in a three, the other D end in a shade and our Jack in a, in a five, the Vipers to the passing string. So we'll play Tampa over here. All right. This free safety will come down in the box. So we're sky support. He's locked. All right, we have our mic now, our rover. Now the rover, and I should have prefaced this with the first slide, your rover has to be your dude. He has to be able to play middle of the field, in the box, up on the line. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, he's got to be your guy. He has to be able to blitz too. Now this is our slide stuff. So what we're going to do with slide, and um, we got to do a lot of clinicking during COVID with uh, Coach Landing at Georgia, who's now at Oregon, um, and we got this from them. Um so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to slide um, we're going to slide from over to mint. So now these guys will slide to four I zero four I and then he's going to walk down in the box. So we're zero out here and we're Tampa to this side. All right. And these guys are both both in 30s. Now, the, the adjustment to that is all right, is to now walk the rover, take this guy out as a wide nine walk him up in a seven, okay, and then stay in this front with the three, the shade, and the five. And then we'll lock the rover up man-to-man -man on the tight end, and then we'll play what we call gold or cover one behind it, or we'll play our cover three. We'll play green, but the rover will still be locked on the tight end man-to-man. -man. So that's kind of how we'll handle 11 personnel. All right. And then here's that here's that look again when we get that, that attached trips um, this is this is what we this is our bear check. All right, so seven technique locked. We have edge, edge. Obviously, we're TNT, right? Zero two threes. Our mic in the middle, and then we're playing gold or cover one behind it. Now, what you coach, can do? Is, where do you get that terminology from, TNT? Because I I say that same exact thing, coach. Is that just old school? That's that was my that was that was what I how I learned it in uh, in high school. Yeah, I so, say that all the time. People look at me like, "What do you mean a bear front?" I was like, "Yeah, TNT." 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Buddy, buddy Ryan, man, the old school Ooh, buddy Ryan. Did he oh. use that terminology, TNT? Uh, in some of his stuff, yeah, yep. Co Coach, did you see when Coach McNally um, showed his nose because of playing for Buddy Ryan? Oh, yeah. No, it, it, it's – that's a You don't have a nose, Coach. Oh, mm -hmm. man. No doubt. No doubt. Um, so, uh, getting back to uh, other adjustments coverage-wise is um, what we'll do sometimes if they have a really good receiver – is we'll, we'll have a yellow check, um, which is down here, and we'll we'll double one of these guys. So let's say we want to go bear, yellow, and we want to go ace right. So we're going to double this receiver right here. Everybody else is zeroed out. Okay, so that that's that's our bear check. So you can see just based on these slides, we're very multiple in what we do, and uh, we don't change personnel. Um, we keep we keep the same personnel on the field. So. Your guys, and when, that's why I say three safety is athletic. We need we need athletes. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll go to some film real quick of our of our zone stuff, our zone pressures, so you guys can see. Um, I'll, I'll I'll go through our. Let's let me start with the. I'll go my I'll go my favorite one here. This is a Coach Brown special here. Um, we got this from him um, many, many 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 moons ago. Uh, so this is our moxie pressure. So what we'll do is it's a simulator. So we're going to show six, but we're only rushing four. So we'll get it a wide edge here. We'll get a wide edge here. Okay. okay. Play this real quick. Wide edge here. All right. That's our rover. That's our jack. Here's our mic. This is our defensive end. This is our nose. So we're going to get the nose here. The nose here. This end is going to try to loop to contain. The jack gets his run pass read from the tackle. All right. If he gets a high hat, he's going to drop. So we're playing Tampa, Tampa to the jack, trap to the viper. The rover has three control. This is number three right now. Okay. They're going to shift him here. So they're going to shift to empty, but this guy's there to block. He's not there to go to pass. So you're going to see the rover hold his look as long as he can. Come. Okay, if we play trap, and I'll show the press box picture. Okay, so here, here's our fight. So we're trapping this. So Bradley should do a better job of trapping this. All right, Javon's going to get over top. Okay, the rule for the Viper is now he's in an apex plus position. So now he is in pass coverage. All right, so he has number two upper in. That's his rule. Because we're trapping with the corner, the corner's going to take anything out. All right, so we're Tampa here, so he's jamming. All right, his alignment is kind of bad. He should be here, dropping here. All right, here's our jack. There's our mic. Here's our wide rush. Boom, boom, and then you'll see the mic coming, coming clean. We get a good hit on a quarterback. Good snap. There we go. Bam. Good hit. Go go fast motion there. I was like that. Mike comes clean. So that, that's our favorite simulator is Moxie. That's our favorite simulator. That's Moxie. All right. Um, next one is uh, Cincy. This is our, our boundary corner pressure. Okay. So this is this is out of our pressure front. So we run about eight pressures out of this front. So we have the, the end nose and end okay we have uh, uh two fours and a zero that's our mic that's our jack we're playing tampa to the field we're trapping the boundary so you're going to see the rover the middle safety's here he's going to jump anything quick we have the boundary safety over top all right this corner is coming hot okay which is a really good here because the back is to the field so he's going to have a free shot at the quarterback everybody slant to the field the backer to the field knows, hey, if we get motion to trips, I got to drop and take three up the shoot. Okay, so that's the only time we'll lose that guy in the pressure. We get back. The end zone shot isn't really good, so I'll keep this with the press box here. You guys can see the job getting a little wider. He knows he has contained to the field.
Okay, we're bringing six. Get quarterback hurries. We had a good man turn there by the corner by Jeffy. Okay. That was a game changer. That was that was we went down and took the lead off off of that pick. Um, here here's something that's a true three high for us. This is Texas, so this is like third and forever. So we'll show these guys up, but they're going to drop. And we have a 55 call on with our end. So these guys are in fives. The nose is still going to slant. Uh, the backer is going to give their an empty here. The nose is still going to slant. Okay, but we're true three high. So safety, rovers in the middle deep, and then our other safeties over here. Give me more and they're over right there is Johnny right here. Okay, Bradley's got to do a better job of getting over this third. All right, we got Jadarian there. So we got our three safeties, we got our Vipers here, we got our edge rush. Okay, in the back, the Mike and the Jack are going to back out. Corner does a good job of not taking that bait on the third and long. Saves so like third and 15. So that's kind of that's kind of the one of the few times we're truly in three high. here so we have two viper pressures that um and coach you can see like we're i'm very one word oriented um the, and the kids know um the kids know what what the coverage is behind it so like panther for us means the viper's gonna blitz from the passing string bama for us means the viper's gonna blitz to the back all right so panther for us we're gonna get you're gonna see we're gonna get a twist here we're playing trap on both sides so the rover's gone johnny johnny now has two upper end Mateo's coming he's going to blitz inside here okay the mic now has two upper in corner takes anything out safety's going to going to fade over one okay but we get a good clean run in here okay you can well, the press box is a pretty good pretty good look here Okay, so you're going to see we're trapping. There's the rover upper in. Get good pressure on the quarterback. Okay, bad snap health, but I mean we had we had we had three we had three guys there. Um, one of the things we do too. So this is this is towards the end of the game here. Is that um, we're going to uh, we're going to stem here. So you're going to see our guys move late. So this is Viper left Panther. Okay. So now the Mike knows he has to now help with three. The Rover now has two upper end. We're trapping here. We're trapping here. Okay. We loop. They try to run a screen into the boundary, but the loop stops it. So you'll see our end come and loop around to stop the screen. We got to get in a big, big TFL game. Okay, C2 goes click TFL third and forever. Now that zone cuts pretty good too here. Okay, so you're gonna see the loop. You're gonna see Micah get out. Uh, you're gonna see Mateo be able to run clean. The loop stops the screen, makes the quarterback hold the ball. Big TFL. Okay, now it's third and third and forever from you know, from their almost their, the, you know, their own goal line. All right. Um, let me go ahead and hop in here. Yeah. So, coach, that that's just like the basics of you know how you know how we do things, how we install. The biggest thing for us is um, teaching the kids. I always tell the kids we're not going to do the fun stuff until we nail down the fundamentals. So, so for us, it's teaching the fundamentals. It's teaching how to tackle. We tackle every day, tackling stations every day. Um, part of the system, and I, it's, the system is 15 courses. Um, we we'll talk about how we tackle, how we practice, how we plan practice, how we game plan, um, all the coverages, all the drills that go with it, on the field stuff. Um, I actually do a voiceover of the International Bowl from 2020 of every defensive series with the Japanese team and why we were doing what we were doing and why it was successful, and even the stuff that that didn't work. You know, I. I don't want to be the, the guy that says, if you if you do this, it's going to work. You have to figure out what works best for you and what's going to put your kids in the best position to be successful. 
So at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about is taking things that you've learned over the years, morphing them together, which, which what we've done and putting our kids in the best position to be successful. So I was talking about like the havoc rate before um, the something I got from coach Brown the year before I got the golden gate, they were giving up 31 points a game this past year. We cut that down to 19. So it went from 31 to 19, 10 interceptions, three defensive touchdowns and a havoc rate for the season of 42%, which is basically almost half the snaps in every game. We had a sack, a TFL, a turnover, a negative play, a QB hurry, a third down stop. And mm. that, that's kind of what we preach to our kids win first down, win on third down. And, and again, we're not going to do the fun stuff until we learn the basics of how to get in a stance, how we align, who's a run support, what are your fundamentals? Look at your stance, everything that goes along with that. Yes, sir. So is there anything else you want to cover today? No, I, I just want to give people, you know, an idea of, of the system and the defense and, you know, how we do things and um, that, you know, the, I know they put the website down the bottom. I mean, my, 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 my contact info is there, my email, my cell phone's on the website. If coaches want to do a Zoom call, want to do it, want me to come out and do an install, I mean, I'm, I'm always open to coming out and helping out people. And I'll be up in uh, speaking next Saturday at the Big New England Clinic, um, 12 to 2. It's in Newport, Rhode Island. So if anybody's watching this and that's going to be attending there, you know, come by. Let's talk some football and let, let's let, let's let's get better. Heck yeah, Coach. So anything else you want to say to the clinic um, before we leave? Anything you left out? And after we get done, Coach, we'll stay on here and talk for a little bit if you got a second. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, um, you know, uh, you know, like we said in the beginning, we're going to be putting on that clinic in April uh, to do the fundraiser. So um, I know Coach will be putting stuff out once we line up the speakers and the date. Uh, we'll get stuff out, and then obviously. Um, we're looking looking to raise money for a great cause and uh, help a lot of kids and, and, and a great organization and family initiative down here in, in Cape Coral. Amen. Thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank Stay you. Stay on, Coach. We'll talk a little bit. Thank you.